All right, we'll go ahead and get started. A reminder to please silence your cell phones, and then uh, whenever you do get the mic to ask a question, please give your name and affiliation. Uh, we'll get started with Jenny, third row left. Um, I actually wanted to ask you a little bit about Jada Coleman. Um, they've switched their lineup around a lot, but she's consistently been that leadoff spot for them. What's the biggest challenge when you face her in specific? And I know they've got a lot of good hitters, but her in specific. Yeah. Go right into it. First question's good, yes. <laughs> um, scouting report. Um, Jada's an athlete. I remember her playing shortstop in the recruiting days. Um, she is uh, extremely passionate, and you can see that in her at-bats. Um, so, you know, I, again, this will go back to our studying tonight, but facing her, you know, mixing spots and all that kind of stuff can be big. But her speed plays for her, athleticism plays for her, uh, let alone her skill sets. You know, I mean, she stays in the zone for a good amount of time with her barrel and um, just a really good hitter. And we're excited to compete against her and the rest of the lineup. Okay, we'll go front row right. Lewis Racer, OU Daily. Yeah, there you go. Lewis Racer, OU Daily. Uh, Catherine, you've faced OU a couple times in your career. Just what have you taken away from those experiences, uh, and what makes this current roster just so tough to face? Yeah, um, every time I face them, they've had an extremely difficult roster. It definitely keeps you on your toes, but I think that it is just the coolest challenge as a pitcher to put yourself up against the best and um, see what you got. And so I'm really excited to face them, and I think it's really cool to – have some experience playing them before. They know me a little bit. I know them a little bit. And, yeah, it should just be really fun softball this week. All right, we'll go third row left. Uh, Lee Dobbins rounding third softball. Coach, uh, obviously the off day is something new within the schedule or fairly new within the schedule. Uh, step us through a little bit about what your day looks like today as far as with the squad. Um, are you guys working out? Are you working out within the complex? And just kind of step us through the day a little bit. Um, yeah, we've been fortunate to benefit from how the tournament's been set up, something we've been fighting for. So um, obviously winning you know, gives you the off days. So it's been really nice to um, have the day to get up in the morning, get a little regen. We take a little walk as a team. Um, everyone's in a little different spot and what they need for their bodies, um, some family time. Uh, and then we have some team time, dinner, and then some scouting and being prepped for the next day. So it's a um, very... Um, good schedule and we put ourselves in a good spot where a couple years ago it was midnight you're home and you're playing the next day and you're trying to figure out how to scout and how to get ready and it was also hot the weather's been incredible here too so we've been in a really good position on that side of it um but yeah it's uh you know something that um practice wise I think we put our time in in the fall we put our time in the season so um to us it's more about mentally being prepared than it is uh in the physical part so we take the the off days as a complete off day okay we got second row right Jaina Bardall with The Athletic. Lonnie, if you've been able to watch, what kind of things did you see Stanford do that they were able to keep their, their games against Oklahoma so close? And are there any parts of that that you guys could maybe mimic? Um, yeah, well, Nigel's 75-mile-an-hour rise ball. Um, we'll try to mimic as best we can. Um, <laughs> but, um, I mean... They do an incredible job. You know, it's super cool. Um, I was able to coach Tori and, and Jess Allister, and um, to watch what they've done for that program is, is super special. And so um, I think there's some heart and passion in the circle and the team getting to find them, playing them. Um, did see them sell out for Jordy. Um, you know, they got after a game plan, and they stuck to it, and that was really awesome to see. And, um, you know, I know sometimes in my time coaching at Stanford, um, we may not get the top athletes, but you got they were all in. The athletes were all in and going to make adjustments and get after it, and we try to keep that with us too. We get some special athletes here, but this is an all-in team too. So when we go to a game plan and we get after it, they are selling out left and right, and um, we're going to take some lessons that, that they learned and implement into our style too. And for any of the players, a lot of people have talked about just the margin of error against Oklahoma is so small, and if you guys think back to when you played them earlier in the season – they jumped ahead pretty quickly, maybe in the fourth inning. How do you avoid those moments and, and avoid them capitalizing uh, really quickly and, and not being able to catch up? Kayla, you can start if you want. Um, I definitely, there's a game plan going into any game. Um, it's just another team. They put on their pants the same way as we do. And I think um, just sticking to us and understanding um, effectively what's, what our pitching staff is doing, um, 
I mean, just being able to minimize the damage that they do, for sure. They have a great lineup, and I think it goes into our field of knowing what it, what we're trying to accomplish on the field in between um, me and the pitchers and knowing that we want to limit to back-to-backs and the amount of people that we allow on the base. So if they do hit a home run, it's bound to happen, but we want to minimize how many runs they get in that. So um, I think it's been pretty cool. Uh, I enjoy playing against OU. They're a very passionate squad, and you want to play the best. So. Yeah, um, I would just say as a team, just staying in our circle, staying within ourselves, um, there's a lot of outside noise right now. Obviously, we're in the World Series, the final one of the final two teams. So I think just staying in ourselves and, you know, carrying the left and the right, just, I, I don't know, just staying external and within your left and your right, just competing, honestly. I agree with that. Um, Coach, I mentioned earlier today, uh, pressure is a privilege. And so... Obviously, they're a very great team, and I think that we are as well. Um, we're more than capable of competing with them, and as long as we stay with our left and our right and staying present external, like JJ said, we can remember that the moments we're in are very much a privilege and that we're all grateful to be here. And as long as we can remember that and stay within and stay in our circle as like and play Seminole softball, I think that we're going to be in a really good spot. Yeah, same. I agree, um, but, you know, margin of error, super small when you're playing Oklahoma. I would say the same for any team that made it to the World Series. I mean, it's the best playing the best here, so I think margin of error is really small when you're playing us. You know, give us an inch, we'll take a mile. It's that mindset. Um, I think that it's the same for all eight teams that made it here. All right, we're good. Uh, back or left. Alex Scarborough, ESPN. Michaela, you have as good a view as anyone, maybe better, when it comes to Cat being on the mound. Uh, what's it like when she's out there? What's that relationship like? And just in general, what does she bring to the team, maybe the confidence when she's on the mound? Kat brings a lot of things to the table. I mean, she's done a great job being the head of the pitching staff, taking Kenny underneath her wing and just teaching um, everyone that it takes a team. And it's going to, um, we've been doing this uh, pitching with a, oh my gosh, with a roster pitching. It'll come back to me. Pitching by committee. There we go. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, it's interesting sometimes when we're in a really good zone, it's like there is no ball in between us. Um, it's complete eye and body language, and it's just it's really, really cool to be in that moment with her, and I'm just really grateful that she's opened up to me and allowed me to be a part of that experience. And Lonnie, uh, you talk about pitching by committee. You talked about last night the strategy of using Cat a little bit less. You've used a lot more arms this year. Can you talk to me more broadly about the strategy of that and whether there's any kind of evolution in the thinking there? Um, yeah, you know, I think that we've seen the trends in softball right now of not riding the one arm pitcher the whole season. Um, and kudos to our game for getting better offensively and strategically. Um, you know, I, I give a lot of credit to Hack Attack <laughs> for having these machines that can repl replicate. Um, I think analytics have gone into it. Everyone knows numbers now, and they know what they're trying to hit. And then TV. It's been incredible. We're on TV. And so the more you get the opportunity to see pitchers and their tendencies, the better adjustments you can make and the great hitting coaches we have in our game. And so um, we on the pitching side and the defensive side have to figure out ways to minimize the momentum of teams. And, um, you know, you have to really figure out the different looks that you can do that and try to find different ways to beat certain hitters. So Jada's a great hitter. Um, so is Haley Lee. So is, you know, and so you have to figure out how do we get, you know, how do we get these hitters out? Well, do we have that arsenal in our bullpen to be able to do that? And so I think strategy becomes a play. And you've seen it more and more in our game and not overexposing people like Kat in certain situations. So then we can bring in a rise ball, drop ball, and a change up, which she has the ability to beat people. But maybe I can get less seeing um, that one hitter at that time. So just really have gone out on a limb of, you know, and, and again, Michaela talked about being the leader of the pitching staff. Um, you know, Michaela. Cat wanted that, you know, wanted to be the leader of pitching staff, but we wanted to figure out how to be a staff. So, um, you know, Michaela alludes, like, pitching by committee, it's been more of a planned out situation to get comfortable with what committee actually means and how to utilize it. Okay, we'll go second row right. Uh, Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic. Uh, Mac, what was it like when you first entered the pitching group and, and first started working with Cat, and how have you seen her take ownership of everything that Coach Almeida is talking about? At first, it was a lot, um, just knowing 
the smarts behind pitching, the smarts behind um, playing to their best pitch, like my best pitch. My, the defense will sell out for what I have, and what I have is a drop ball and change up. Um, so I think that having Kat as a leader um, last year, stepping in, like I didn't really know who she was, but immediately she like took my hand and guided me, and I couldn't be more grateful for that. And this year I've seen her step up even more so than last year. Um, we've got a really big staff, and she's managed to lead every single one of us in different ways. Um, I think it's a testament to her leadership for sure and just the ability to know each one of us and lead us in that way. And Coach has also done a great job with this. And um, I for sure wouldn't be where I'm at with the confidence level that I have um, or the capabilities I have without either of these two behind me. Go second round left. Tark Moss here with the Norman Transcript. Uh, for Lonnie, uh, how do you go about preparing for a defense that uh, doesn't make uh, very many mistakes? And I know you guys have played a lot of good teams in the past, but as far as psychologically, how do you go about kind of preparing your team for that situation? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it just comes down to the pitching. So I think your defense is going to be as good as your your pitching is consistently. And so, um, you know, they have some great pitchers in the circle and they know what to play for and you know, again, pretty athletic, you know, so they can cover some ground. But, you know, we got to do what we do. And we like to run the bases, and we need to get on the bases, and we want to push some situations. So if we can push the defense, then that can put us in a really good situation to be able to extend some innings and get after some things. So um, it's one thing to tip your cap to what they have. It's another to really get after what we do. And, and I think that's what we're going to be about. All right. We'll go second row on the right. Emma Bacheleri, Sports Illustrated. For any of the players, the golden socks you all have for mental toughness. Um, can you describe how that got started, what that focus has meant to the team this year, and who's been getting the golden socks lately? Yeah, no. Um, Ellie Cooper, our mental performance coach, uh, decided randomly, I think she found those socks at some um, shop. And just talking about um, our mantra, like, let's ride and being rugged, and uh, I think that's kind of where it all started and just being able to um, give some highlight on the player that really was going, um, staying through it, staying to her plan, regardless of what the outcome was. And I think that's the bigger part is that you don't have to uh, be performing 10 out of 10 um, to get those socks. It's all about being there for your team and definitely being a part of the circle and sticking to your left and your right. And I think it's been super cool just because we're acknowledging the little things and at this point of the year, that's where um, the little things are, the big things into this big picture. So it's really cool. Who got the socks last night? We have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if we have the socks here, but we're still acknowledging it. We've been so tough lately that the team is getting the socks. Yeah. Everybody is. So we need 22 pairs. Yeah, now, we need 22 but... pairs of socks. Yeah. More coffee shop visits. <laughs> All right, we'll go front row left. Uh, right, Chapman, I'll as coach. You, you talked about your base running. So much offensively, we talk about power exerting pressure on opposing pitching staffs. What, what is your aggression and, and how excellent you guys are running the bases? How does that exert pressure on opposing pitching staffs? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think one is – when you look at teams that can run, you put away certain pitches. Um, you know, you're looking at the opportunity for maybe a ball in the air versus a ball on the ground or a strikeout pitch. Um, and I wouldn't say it's just that's our sole thing. It's just something that we really make sure that we take pride in every day at practice. So this isn't like, hey, this week let's work on base running. It is an every week thing for us um, because, again, you can have power, you know, and last night we had power. So as long as we're training all facets in our offensive strategies, then we have things to go to. And uh, um, I think when you force the defense to shut you down, which when we base run against us every day, it makes us better on the defensive side. And you realize how the the margin of error, a ball here versus a ball here, can be safe or out. And so we really just you know, take pride in that piece of pushing that. Okay, we'll go to third row right. Brett Nevitt, Knowles 247. Coach, just what is it like being around this team on a daily basis and how much time is spent off the field to build the culture that you've built at this program? Yeah, I mean, it's been incredible this year. Um, probably one of my, I guess, as a staff and as a coach, you know, a challenge this year. It's uh, I feel like we had a little bit of still the COVID overhang. Um, I still like the Gen Z mindset um, and then the expectation. Um, we had a lot of 
um, feelings from last year, the end of last year. And so um, really trying to, to manage um, different people from where they're at. You know, I think some people were upset about the season. Some were still trying to figure themselves out. Some were still trying to gain confidence. And we were still trying to figure out how to be a team. And so um, we kept pushing the buttons, pushing the buttons. And fortunately, every single player stayed in it, stayed in it from where they were and kept rising up. And it's just so cool to see them right now earn this moment. Um, you know, you talk as a coach all along, like how I want you to experience the World Series. They'll have that for their lifetime. They're going to have these moments for a lifetime. And um, like I said last night, like I chose this career and I, I have a passion for it. So then they can have these moments of elation that they have each earned, you know. Janai's earning it. Kat's earning it. Michaela's earning it. And they're going to have that forever. So um, I'm so proud of us as a staff to be able to kind of keep our arms around this circle and let them have their moments. All right, we have a question on Zoom from Kurt. Kurt Weiler, the Osceola. Lonnie, I know uh, your, your your last three trips now to OKC you made the championship series. I'm sure it's not one thing you point at, but what do you point at as, what do you look at as the reasons why? I mean, when y'all have made it to, to OKC lately, I mean, it's been long stays. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would... I always fall back on how we do things. I mean, we have a saying, how you do anything is how you do everything. And what we're doing right now is no different than what we did in February or March. And um, we really take pride in as a program building for this time of year. So, um, you know, as a team, you're going to go up and down in successes throughout the season. Um, but our mindset is always like, I want, I want Kat to be the strongest at the end of the season. I want Janai to learn these moments. So at the end of the season, she's super comfortable in them and just all facets of it. So I think that, you know, we have this, um, vision, um, and it's mapped out and we check the boxes as we go along. And, um, you know, I feel like when you're building that process piece then they can always rely on this is how we do things and it's not something new at this point in the year and um, I truly believe that's a big part of it it's just our culture and how we live daily and yes there is an expectation of how to play the game of softball um, but it's off the field too and it's how you deal with each other on and off the field and and I see that show up for them a ton and they can rely on each other more questions for Florida State Um, to me, Coach uh, gave me a start. Um, she gave me like a new chapter in my life that I really didn't think I would get. Um, I say to myself a lot, I'm living a dream I didn't know I have, and that's a lot because of Coach and because of these girls. And so just to constantly remember that and remind myself that, I'm so, so grateful. Um, this is beyond what I believed I was capable of as a player or even as um, – just like from where I grew up or where I was at, like this wasn't something that where I came from in Bloomington, Normal, Illinois, like you don't go to the World Series. Like we just go and play softball and then you go get a career after college. Like this is next level and this is just a dream. So it's, I'm just grateful. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was just going to say like, I guess from my freshman year to now, I've kind of gone through a lot of things and, my freshman year was a little tough for me, I guess you could say. So just having Coach uh, allowing me and Hallie, who at the time had torn ACLs in 2021 when we did come to the World Series, we got to experience it in like a totally different way than just playing the game. So I feel like just from the scouting aspect of it, we got to learn a lot so that when we were on the field, I guess you could say this year um, at the World Series, actually getting to play it and live the game life of it um we know where to be we know how to help our pitchers we know how to back them up for their best stuff so I just feel like the family part of it is so huge but just like the way that she teaches things is so different than anything that I've experienced um from coaches which I very much appreciate yeah um Coach and the staff uh, gave the girl in the backyard of Tallahassee a shot. 
and uh, I talk about it all the time. I chose to come to Florida State to grow not only as a player but as a person and just thinking how nurturing of an environment it is and um, like we say it takes a village. We do have a village behind us and it's amazing that I've been able to experience my time here in Florida State and how coaches just allow me to grow and be myself both on and off the field. Um, I get a lot of comments about my makeup about I don't know why they let her do that. It's just it's it's a little much for me, but um, to be able to do something, allow a coaching staff and um, a community um, be behind it has been really, really amazing and just allow me to grow into the person I am today. I love Coach. Uh, it's I just from where I was at my freshman year and who I was, I've just completely changed not only as an athlete. I mean, she's transformed me into the pitcher that I am today and just – I mean, I've always loved softball. I dreamed of playing on this stage as a little kid, and I would not be here at all without Kocha and just what she's allowed me to do, um, but just as a person, too. Like, a lot of tough conversations, growing moments. You know, it hasn't been perfect, but it's just been one of the most important and amazing relationships of my life, and I'm just so unbelievably grateful for Kocha and for just the whole coaching staff, support staff, just everybody. i have just... I, I just wouldn't be who I am if I hadn't chose Florida State. So I'm just so unbelievably grateful. All right, that'll wrap things up for Florida State. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.